Hi, I'm Lucy Hald Caldwell, the Director of Communications for the Fairfax County Health Department. And thank you for joining us today as part of our lunchtime series on mental health issues in observance of Mental Health Month. And the Fairfax County Health Department knows, as many of you do, there is no health without mental health. And we're very fortunate to have Amanda Davis Scott here with us, who manages and oversees the Turning Point Program, which is an initiative of the Fairfax Falls Church Community Services Board here in Fairfax County. And it's with what's been happening um, the weeks and months, um, it's been very, very tragic and very, very upsetting to see some of the mass shootings that have taken place and the um, different uh, tragedies and deaths involved with that. And all of these situations um, immediately almost, as mentioned, mental health. And when we think about mental health, we um, associate sometimes these very uh, sad and terrible situations. But the truth is there are programs such as Turning Point that do provide treatment and hope and recovery and prevention and early intervention. And that's what we're here to talk about today because right here in Fairfax County, we are so very fortunate to have the only program throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia of its kind, of the turning point, and one of, I believe, 10 in the state. So thank you so much, Amanda, for being here with us. And tell us a little bit about Turning Point. What is it? Well, thank you, Lucy, for the opportunity to be here. Um, so Turning Point was actually started in 2015. Um, we were a program that was um, an evidence-based model for treating first episode psychosis. Our program, as Lucy mentioned, is one of 10 in the state um, that provides wraparound services tailored to each individual enrolled in the program with the goal of supporting them to returning to prior levels of functioning, getting back to doing the things that they were doing before they started to have mental health symptoms. Some of the services that make our program stand out from others is that we provide both individual and group therapy to help individuals address and manage their experiences, multifamily psychoeducation and support so that families can improve communication with their loved one. And we really emphasize the um, work and school component and trying to get people back on their feet, going back to school and going back to work. Um, we put an emphasis on stigma and, I, and trying to help reduce the isolation that individuals may feel due to their experiences. We provide peer support and social activities um, to ensure that the indiv individuals in our program know that they're not alone in their experiences. I want to back up um, what you said about psychosis. A lot of people probably have no idea what that means and what it is. And it's really important to understand so that people will know um, what it is so they can recognize it in themselves or in someone they love. Can you tell us what that is yeah, and how so, do you recognize it? So um, psychosis, um, a psychotic episode is when a person um, moves from a stage of having some warning signs and moves into an active episode. So what does a warning sign look like for psychosis? Um, it's usually symptoms might start as vague and mild, hardly noticeable changes that increase over time, over the course of a year or two. These could be changes in their thought patterns, their beliefs or their experiences. Um, sometimes individuals may um, have an increase in being suspicious around their family or home. Others may hear ringing or buzzing in their ears or just be more sensitive to light. Um, and when that progresses into an active psychotic episode, what that looks like is people might actually be hearing voices. They might have rigid, bizarre or false beliefs that we call delusions. Um, or they might just have difficulties with thinking clearly, feeling confused um, or difficulties expressing themselves. Hmm. Are there situations that uh, lend themselves to causing psychosis or causing um, some type of psychotic break? And we talk about um, you know recognizing it, but where do people even learn about how to recognize it? 
So I guess those are two different questions, but um, I'm just so, so curious. In terms of how does psychosis kind of develop, there's a combination. It's it's both a genetic and an environmental cause. We, we refer to that as the stress vulnerability model. What that means is that sometimes people have this genetic predisposition to having certain symptoms or certain experiences. And then what may happen is that they might also have some environmental causes. So they might have some stressors happening at home, um, differences in regards to um, what, what they might be experiencing. They might have some adverse childhood experiences that have kind of come into play that make them more vulnerable to having these experiences occur. In terms of how do we kind of identify it and how do you kind of move towards treatment? Our program utilizes a screening tool. It's called the Prime Screener Tool. This is um, a tool that came from Yale University, and it's really meant to be um, focused on the person and what their experiences are. So it's a 12 question tool that's designed to kind of help a person identify if they might benefit from talking to a program like ours. What does that screening tool look like? What are some of the questions um, that people um, listening or watching should be aware of um, because not everybody has a screening tool or and it may not come to mind. But sometimes when we talk about a situation, they may recognize it in uh, a loved one, a nephew, a niece, a grandchild, uh, a neighbor. And, um, you know, when we see these uh, mass incidents that are impacting, you know, towns and counties and localities across this country, I think that recognizing an early detection of these kinds of things is so important. Absolutely. So some of the questions that, are, that we ask uh, individuals um, as we're determining if they're appropriate for our program, has anybody ever told you that you seem more suspicious or that um, you've got these rigidly held beliefs or people disagree with you in, in some of your beliefs? Um, other questions are, do you feel like you're hearing um, noises that other people might not be able to hear? Or are you seeing things like flashes of lights or shadows that you're sometimes wondering, like, is that there or is that not really there? Interesting. Um, what's the age level that, in your experience, you've seen these types of symptoms may uh, typically start? And has that changed? So typically what we see is that um, for individuals, symptoms may begin um, a little bit after puberty. So um, we really see uh, young adult time frame. So 16 to 30 is, is usually the age range where we'll see these symptoms start to um, occur. It may happen for males. It might happen a little bit closer to like that 16 to 25 range. And for females, it's actually a little bit later. It might be in the early to late 20s when those symptoms might start to exist. You know, a, a lot of people may feel um, afraid, right? If they're, you know, some of the things that they're hearing about uh, that you're talking about, it can be very frightening and very scary. So talk a little bit about um, what the program does and what it offers and how would somebody access the Turning Point program? Yeah, so um, when it comes to accessing our program, uh, we have an email um, inbox where um, it's manned by our uh, team and we'll all kind of take a look at it and respond to your emails. Um, if that is something that you're interested in trying to be assessed for a program or having your loved one assessed for a program, we will kind of coordinate a time where we could come out to the house or meet with them virtually or do a phone call to see if that might be the best way to talk to them about what they're experiencing and just kind of offer some normalization of like, a lot of people go through this and, and they don't necessarily seek treatment, but it's more about what do you want and what do you want to see for yourself moving forward? Do you think you could benefit from some help, like from a program like ours? Tell me about some of the experiences in the program. Um, and, you know, once someone is admitted to the program, what are some of the experiences and maybe um, some positive news about results and how uh, treatment um, has been effective? 
Absolutely. So we provide a lot of different services in our program. Most individuals will come in and participate in um, weekly therapy or group therapy, um, different options just to try to get them engaged. We also include peer services. So we have a peer specialist on our team who has lived experience with psychosis who can really kind of relate to some of the experiences that these individuals are going through. We also um, really focus on the social component. A lot of people feel isolated. They feel different by having these experiences. And what we do is we focus on getting them out and doing regular things, going to the mall, going to sports games, going bowling, things like that. So we really focus on getting people engaged and keeping them engaged in the community and things that they were doing previously. Um, in terms of success, we our program is very successful in regards to our outcomes. Most of our individuals, when they finish working with our program, they're either back in school full-time or part-time. They might've gone on to graduate um, or complete a degree, or they're working full-time or part-time. They're, you know, some people leave our program taking medications and having a better understanding of medications, but it's not a requirement of our program. So a lot of people actually work with our psychiatrists to get off of medications or know what that looks like in terms of whether they might need a medication that they only take every once in a while. Um, we actually just had contact with one of our recent alumni from the program who, when he started with us, he had actually had his first episode during his freshman year at college and ended up coming back home to live with his parents. It was very uncertain what his future looked like. While he worked with our team, he worked with our education and employment specialist and our peer very heavily on getting back to school, knowing if he needed accommodations. And then he was able to, to move out of the area and go on. And he actually just graduated with his bachelor's degree. So he was really excited to come back and tell us about it and reconnect with our team. That's amazing. Because a lot of people feel like once a diagnosis comes, that um, their lives will never be the same again. Talk a little bit about that. Like the importance of early treatment and prevention. And that's one of the unique things about Turning Point is that it has that prevention component. Absolutely, so we really emphasize, let's talk more about your experiences and less about the diagnosis. The diagnosis is just a snapshot of time and it's really, doesn't necessarily add anything to our treatment. You know, we wanna focus on what somebody's actually going through and what they can do to kind of get through that or manage that, that situation. Um, in terms of where they go from, from here, like I said, a lot of our folks end up just kind of graduating or they have the education and the tools after participating in our program to know how to manage their symptoms in the future. I think it's fascinating. Um, how many people are in the program and do you have a waiting list and how does the word get out about the program? So a lot of um, our referrals come straight from hospitals or they come from uh, members of the community. We have a large um, group of parents that participate in the um, NAMI family support groups. And so- and what is NAMI for people who listening we might not know? The National Alliance for um, Mental Illness. Okay. And um, so we really, um, most of our program is spread through word of mouth events like this, that, that we are a resource that's there to the community. Um, we currently have a wait list, um, but it's just for a wait for people to get assessed into our program. Once somebody has been deemed appropriate for our program, we usually start them within a week. I mean, it's such a wonderful program and we hear so much about not enough resources being devoted to mental health and to programs like yours. Uh, what thoughts do you have or advice do you have for programs like this around the country? Um, so I think a lot of it is just advocating for the need that there is a huge need um, in communities to, to treat and provide this prevention option for people to know that you can get help early, even before you have a hospitalization or legal problems um, or, you know, lifelong chronic disorders. A lot of early treatment means that you're not going to have the same uh, consequences or same stigma that a lot of people presume comes with having a serious mental illness. Are there um, different uh, conditions that you talked about environmental and hereditary um, inclinations towards serious mental illness? Are there different conditions that can make it more possible that you will 
um, acquire a, a serious mental illness or a serious condition such as schizophrenia. Yeah, so um, there is a genetic component to illnesses like schizophrenia um, in which um, what, what our program and research has shown is that if somebody has a first degree relative, like a parent or a sibling with schizophrenia, then they are more likely to potentially have experiences similar to schizophrenia. Um, we also see that individuals that have had more experiences with adverse childhood uh, experiences like trauma, witnessing domestic violence or exposure to um, illicit drug use, then they might be more likely to come into contact um, and have the experiences of, of psychosis. But in general, psychosis does not discriminate. It's going to affect you regardless of your socioeconomic um, status, regardless of whether you're insured or not. Yeah, and um, I, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate um, you sort of shedding light about the issue of psychosis and psychotic break, because it really is uh, fascinating. Um, you've been involved in this program for some time. Have you noticed trends in, um, in treatments or anything that might be evolving and coming down the pike for people? So there's definitely um, a, a huge movement occurring in the psychosis field of how can we intervene earlier? What else can we do around that early prevention? As, as you mentioned, we are the only program in the state that has this prevention component. Um, so it makes Fairfax County recipients very fortunate to have these options for them. Um, and th that's where the, the emphasis and research is heading now is how can we intervene earlier so that there's not hospitalization, so that there's not legal consequences for individuals when they do move into that active phase of psychosis. Thank you so much. Um, we do have a question that's come in. Um, the question is, what are the options for family members to seek emergency mental health care for a loved one? who they feel may be suffering from a psychosis? Well, my first recommendation would be go ahead and reach out to us in our email uh, inbox um, or reach out to the CSB um, through different, through the Community Services Board, through different modalities in order to try to see if you can get somebody assessed, um, whether it can be done um, at their home or um, if they have to come into the center to be assessed for, for psychosis. And if somebody is having an, an emergency and needing crisis support, then we do recommend trying to get them to an ER or to emergency services to be assessed to determine um, if they're at risk to themselves or to others. Thank you. Um, how, how long is the program or is there a typical length or you mentioned uh, one person who had gone on and uh, gotten their degree. Is there a typical time frame for the Turning Point program? Mm -hmm. So every individual is different. We try to look at them um, as their own, you know, each person has their own wants and desires. And so sometimes our program can serve people for up to three years um, okay. if it's appropriate. Um, but most people kind of finish our program in that one to two year time frame where they feel like they've gotten the skills, they've gotten the support that they needed, and they're ready to kind of jump back into what they were doing before. It's wonderful. It sounds like a wonderful program in Fairfax County's residents are so fortunate to have this. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we conclude? Um, I think just kind of being cognizant that um, a lot of times people hear the word psychosis and they think that people might be a danger to, to others. Or, um, But what's really important is that um, while some individuals with psychosis may be aggressive or violent, it's actually very rare individuals with psychosis are actually more likely to experience suicidal thoughts or be vulnerable to victimization than they are to actually perpetrate violence. And um, our program just really put, places an emphasis on the having mental health support that's there um, and seeking treatment and seeking help early on just kind of gives you better outcomes. That's wonderful. And it's so important for um, not only the individual to understand this, but also for their support network, whether it's uh, family members or friends, neighbors, um, other relatives. It's so important for people, everyone, to be educated about psychosis, about what can happen, about preventive steps they can take. Um, I know there's a lot of information out there. Do you have resources um, for the 
best place people should go to educate themselves about psychosis and about how maybe to prevent um, an episodic uh, break. Absolutely. So we really recommend, of course, checking out the CSB website and, and our Turning Point website. We do have some resources listed there. But then there's other networks out there for people, um, like the Hearing Hearing Voices Network. That's really important for people that do experience voices to have an opportunity to engage with other people who have had those similar experiences. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be on medications or that you need to be in treatment forever, but it's, it's more so just kind of giving you some support. All right. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here with us today and talking about these very, very important issues during Mental Health Month. But um, hopefully people will be thinking about this and they'll have it ready uh, should they ever need it and uh, share the information with each other. Thank you again. Thank you.